No, that's that's much too bright. Let's turn you away. It just is it. Yeah, that's better. Oh, I <laughs> yeah. Just sorting the light. It's a bit dark today, and um, it was a bit glaring in my face, wouldn't you say? Anyway, let's go on to today's episode. As promised, uh, we're going to be playing against Celtic and Aberdeen today. The Aberdeen game was due for the Friday, but it's now been moved to the Saturday because they're playing on the Thursday or the Wednesday or something like that. But nonetheless, still going to get to see Celtic and Aberdeen. Uh, I've played a couple of games since we last met. A lovely 3-1 victory over Ross County, where Eamon Brophy scored a couple and Sam Greenwood was actually on the score sheet. And then a hugely disappointing uh, 1-0 loss to Hamilton Academical. Um, we did not play well at all in that game. Um, before we move on to the Celtic game, though, I have some news. So if you look at our strikers, you'll see that Eamon Brophy has scored 11 goals, Sam Greenwood has scored 2, and Nicky Kabamba has scored 1. So Brophy's doing well. The other two beside him aren't scoring the goal. So I've brought in a couple of strikers in free agency. The first one here is Cyril Thoreau. Uh, you can see he's actually very well-rounded. Perhaps his physical's starting to fall away, mainly because he's 37 years old. Um, but I didn't quite realise I'm paying him £2,500 a week. But nonetheless, um, we've, we've brought um, uh, uh, say Thoreau in here. Um, Three-star um, he's, he's He's there, hopefully, to score some goals. He's six foot two, a physical specimen. Uh, w- when he was uh, in Italy, he was scoring a lot of goals. Um, there for uh, for for Udinese. Um, recently, not so much, but we picked him up in a free, so hopefully he can do something for us. And we've also brought in Kalen Hines, Hines, Hines. I'm going to go with Hines. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, he can play on the left wing, or he can play uh, behind the striker or up front, and he'll be playing up front for us. You can see physicals are very good. Uh, three star capability, four star potential. Uh, he was previously uh, an Arsenal youth prospect before moving to Germany, coming back to Watford. He's not really played a lot of games in his career uh, at first team level, but I'll look forward to um, to having him in the team. I think uh, he signed a contract actually for uh, for a few years. He's here until the, uh, the end of the twenty twenty three season, um, which he's he's possibly going to have a wee partnership with Brophy. That's my hope. Uh, keeps saying he wants to play left wing, but I want to play him up front. Uh, And I think he's the ideal player to play as a pressing forward with those physical stats. So uh, I think think he could be one for for the future. So that leads us to the team for today's game against Celtic. Uh, And up front, we are going to play through alongside Brophy, um, mainly because uh, Hines is only just, just signed for the club. Uh, Thoreau's been here for a few weeks now. So Greenwood did score a goal a couple of games ago, but still Greenwood and Kambamba really aren't performing well enough up front for us. Uh, so we'll try someone different. I say try Thoreau in there uh, as a pressing for. It's probably He's probably not best as a pressing forward, but we're going to try him there anyway because Brophy's doing so well as an advanced forward. Uh, the rest of the team for the game is McKenzie and Sybil on the wings. We'll play Dicker and Power in the middle. Uh, we do have we do unfortunately have an injury to Alan. Uh, Alan? That's not his name. Aaron Tishbola, um, but and Yusuf Malumbu is there on the bench to come on if need be. Uh, at the back, we've got Millen and Honstrup either side with Menge and Finlay. That's kind of becoming a normal partnership uh, at centre back. There you can see they're starting to form a link there. Uh, and Danny Rogers uh, and goal as always. Let's get into this game. So we'll just tell the team that we are huge underdogs, so there's no pressure on you to go and succeed. To go out there and show everyone what you've got. And how do they react? I mean, thanks Menge for staying motivated, but everyone else isn't interested at all. So, here we go. Away to Celtic, probably the toughest game of the season. And there's a highlight straight away here. Ryan Christie with the ball, swings it into the box. It's headed clear. James Forrest. And it's saved well by Rodgers, thankfully. And we've escaped unscathed 
with that first attack for Celtic. Oh, but there's another one. Christie swings the ball in. Duffy at the back. Oh, just about cleared. Tell you, we're living dangerously. And another one. Christie swings in. Edward, and there we go. So, 10 minutes into the game, three highlights for Celtic. And there is a goal. It's 14th of the season for Rodson Edward. Um, I mean, just fairly poor defending from a command point of view there. And that's 1 0 Celtic. And the first highlight since the goal, after they'd come thick and fast, we weren't really having any highlights at all. Greg Taylor, the former Kilmarnock player, plays it into Baton, finds Forrest, who gets challenged by Hornstrup, and is that a penalty? Or did he take a dive? Oh no, uh, it's a penalty. Great, right. So is it near Baton taking this penalty for Celtic? He does, and he misses. Is that the post? I think it hit the post. So Dan Rogers dived the right way though, but the ball hit the post. And now it's a chance for us, is it? Millen plays the ball in. Uh, back out to Power. Power with the ball to Decker. Is he going to switch the ball over? He's going to play it to the centre back in Finlay. He switches it back to the right-hand side. It's intercepted by Greg Taylor. Ryan Christie collects. He's going to drive at Ross Millen here. He hits. He hit, hits it. I'm not sure what happened there. Rogers plays the ball forward. Flicked on. And... Uh, Celtic are kind of overrunning us in the middle of the pits there. We might have to make a few changes at half time. The ball's into Christie and it's a goal. I mean, it's not surprising that we would be losing to Celtic. It's maybe so it's maybe surprising that we're losing so badly. Uh with them now having ten shots and us having had one. Um yeah, that's just that's just too easy really, unfortunately. Two 0 Celtic. Five minutes until half time and we've cleared the ball with a goal kick, which has went straight to Celtic. Dickers maybe made a challenge, not quite. Edward. Oh. This this could turn into a rout if we don't watch out. You can see Tom Rogic there, plays it on to Edward. Dicker had half tackles. Edward takes it and hits it from about twenty five yards out and the keeper is not down to it quick enough. 3-0 Celtic. Well, we're at half time now and we are being thoroughly overrun in midfield so I think I'm going to change the formation uh, to, to the more defensive one just to put another player in midfield. I know that we're not going to win this game anymore but I really don't want to get absolutely pummeled. Um, so we'll put we'll put Malumbu in for uh, for the Ruh who's not played well since we... Uh, since since we gave him his first start from the to the club, so that seems like a worthwhile transfer so far. Um, I say we'll bring on Malimbu for an extra body in midfield there, and just hope that we can keep it at three 0 I know that's not a good way to play, but let's hope we can keep it at three 0 Here's a first chance of the second half. Power plays the ball in. It's cleared by Celtic. Honstrup collects the ball, plays it back in, and Barkas collects. The ball's played forward to Edward, who finally challenges, but goes straight to Beaton, who finds Scott Brown. Beaton out to Perez here on the right-hand side, swings the ball in. Edward, it's off the bar. I tell you, we're living life on the edge here. We really are. There's 15 minutes to go, so we'll make some changes as we can make them. We'll bring on Harrison Burrows on this side here. Uh, Honstrup's not playing well, so let's bring McGowan on for him. I'm not going to bring on Kaelin Hines for his first game against Celtic here to not do anything. We'll bring on Greenwood up front and and Chris Burke can play on the right-hand side for Rory McKenzie. Oh, it's straight away since I made the changes as a highlight here for Celtic. Perez with the ball down the line. The ball swung in. Millen, is he giving away another penalty? Yeah, it looks like he's giving away a penalty there. Yep. Edward takes it. And my players run out of the box. How does that count? Surely my players have to leave the box. Nonetheless, 4-0 Celtic. Uh, this, like my players are... Look, 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 they're not even... There's three of my players in the box there. That's ridiculous, ref. You should let them out the box. But They missed their first penalty of the game, but they scored their second. They've got another highlight here, and it's... Oh, this is already embarrassing. It's maybe turning even more embarrassing now. And the game ekes out there. Full-time Celtic 4 Kilmarnock now. Our expected goals was 0.27. If you could let me know in the comments below if when you've been playing your game you've ever had an expected goals 
for your team less than 0.27. I think that might be my lowest of the season so far. Uh, 0.27 expected goals. No one played particularly well in that game. I suppose that's not a real surprise. Uh, yeah. Let's move on to the next one, will we? Look, there's actually, there's actually tea in it this time. Tetley. Tetley, I think. ba da 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 ba Nicky ka ba 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 da 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 ba 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 da ba Nicky ka ba ba Nicky ka ba 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 I don't even know why I'm singing that song for Nicky ka ba ba he's not even playing for us today. So here is a team we're going to go with today. We've got Rodgers and goal, Millen and Honshrup in the wings. In the wings? No, they don't play on the wings. They play at full back. Uh, with Menge and Finlay in the middle. Burke and Sybil to either side of the midfield duo of Dicker and Power. And up front, Brophy. And we're going to play Hines instead of Thoreau today because he didn't play very well last game. Thoreau and uh, I think Hines could be the future in that position. I say his physical stats work best uh or as I think as a pressing forward. Um so so that's what we're gonna try and do with him. Uh, and we'll see we'll see how he does today. I say at home against Aberdeen should be a tricky game. They're technically still below us on the league table at the moment, but um it should still be a tricky game. They are a, a tricky side uh, to play against. Let's get right into this. The game kicking off. Let's see if we perform slightly better than we did against Celtic in the last game. And we've got a highlight straight away. We've got Millen into Burke. And the ball is cleared. Hopefully Menge collects this with no drama. Switches it over to Finlay, who goes forward to Brophy. He brings it down, out to Burke. Burke with the ball cuts inside and gives it away. But the ball falls to Honstrup here, who plays it forward. And it's cleared by Aberdeen. And McGinn gets the ball forward to Cosgrove. They're passing it about in the middle of the pitch here. And out to the right-hand side to McCrory who's challenged, but what a finish. I can't even be upset with that. That is an unbelievable strike. Let's see this in 2D. Played out to McCrory there. I thought we might have given away a penalty, but it was a good challenge, and he's just first time, I mean, pick that out, keeper. There's no way that's getting saved. What a finish, and 1-0 to Aberdeen. Another highlight here. Aberdeen throw the ball in. It's cleared by us. Here's the goal scorer. Back out to Hayes. Challenged and cleared by Dicker. Is Brophy going to win that race? No, he's not. Pass across the defence. Are they going to punt up the field? No, they're not. Into McGeoch. Dunkley again. Into McGeoch. Forward to the goal scorer. Ba ba Bear? Is that how? Ba ba? I think that's possibly how you pronounce it. I'm not too sure. Definitely uh, of Scandinavian origin and a thought. But he collects the ball out to McCrory. Oh, he hit it across goal. Good save from Danny Rogers. Tips it wide and it's out for a corner kick. McGeoch swings the ball into the box. It's cleared by Menge. And could we be first to it? No one not. McCrory's going to win that. Into Hoban. And the highlight's over. As you can see from the league table there, if Aberdeen uh, keep this result, they will actually go ahead of us in the league, disappointingly. But McGeoch with a corner swings the ball into the back post. Menge clears it. Brophy should be the first one to it. He keeps the ball in successfully on the left-hand side. Plays it infield to Sibbald. Back to Hornstrup. Hornstrup switches the play to Dicker. Can he go further to the right? No, back to Finlay. Play it forward to Brophy, who flicks it out to the left to Sibbald. He swings it into Buck at the back post. Off the frame of the goal. And it's out for a throw-in. That was a chance there for Chris Buck. Another highlight here, five minutes until half time. Kicked out from the keeper for an Aberdeen and Cosgrove has scored the goal. Well, well, that was fairly easy for the one to route one football. Just Joe Lewis here pumps the ball out of the pitch. The ball is went straight to Hedges. Cosgrove takes one touch and the positioning from Rogers there is, I think, questionable at best. And that's 2-0 to Aberdeen. 
after our fairly decent start to the season, it looks like possibly we're starting to crumble mid-season here. Far from pleased from what I just saw. I said to them at half-time, and that seems to have given them a kick up the bottom. We'll see what happens now. We nearly conceded from that highlight, but we've got a corner kick here. Burke straight to the defender at the front post. Let's see if he swings it again. He hits it. Or it was a cross, I'm not sure. Either way, it wasn't very good. And Joe Lewis collects the ball, and he plays it route one again. Menge flicks it on, Burke collects. Is he going to drive up the right-hand side? Keep going, keep going to run. He's challenged, but oh, he gets past Considine. Burke swings the ball in, Brophy at the back post. Oh, and it's just over the bar. Still 2-0 to Aberdeen. Let's make a little tactical change, I think. I think I'm going to change the formation ever so slightly. We're going to play... Three in the middle of the park to try and compensate for the three that they have in the middle of the park. Um, how what what role does Sibold like the best when he plays in the middle? He doesn't mind playing box to box. That's fine by me. And we'll play we'll play a uh, power on on automatic central midfielder, and we'll send we'll send uh, Brophy over here to the middle, and Burk up front, and we'll bring on another striker. We'll bring on Thoreau to play up there. And he'll play as a target man because he's six foot two, a bit of height there. Target man attack. So we'll play three up top, um, three in the middle, try and compensate those three they've got in the middle of the park and see if that makes a difference. I still don't want the fullbacks bombing on, but we'll see if that makes any difference at all uh, in this game. Well, 10 minutes since the changes, and we've got the first highlight, and it's actually just thrown straight to the opposition from us. But Honstrup collects it again on this left hand side. Plays the ball into the middle, Brophy scores a goal. Oh, and it's been disallowed for offside. Very disappointing. Again, this is a weird angle. Um, it's, it's close, it's maybe just offside. We'll give you that, but it was a good finish anyway. Just making a few more changes here. Maluma's going to come on for Sybold and plays an advanced playmaker and Burroughs and McGowan are going to come on at the full-back position and push forward to be wing-backs just in an attempt to, to do something here in the game. And we've also changed our mentality from cautious to attacking for the last 15 minutes, just to see if we can get something. Burroughs swings the ball in. Oh, there was uh, nearly a goal from the corner there. But the goal kick now for Aberdeen. They play the ball forwards. Uh, Burroughs is back there in the left wing-back position, collects the ball, plays it forward. It's intercepted. Now this is where we're possibly going to be overrun in terms of numbers because we're playing so many players further forward today. Uh, Bayer finds Ferguson, finds McCrory, Bear, I get... I would like to see the replay of that because from 2D, that looked like that went straight at Danny Rogers and and he should have probably saved it. We'll have a look here. The ball's played in, McCrory, and he hits it and I mean, I mean, it's not like it's miles. I mean, it's just, it's just here. It's not really that far away. He should really have been Saving that, but I mean, it's another good goal from the boy, but that's 3-0 Aberdeen. Now, let's see if we can score from this highlight here. Burrows with a free kick about 30 yards out. Hits it, and it's well saved from Joel Lewis. Let's see if we get anything from the corner kick. Burrows swings the ball in towards the back post. It's flicked. And we only had one person back there. They had every single player back defending that corner kick there. Well, we've definitely had more shots in the second half than we had before. We're now almost equal with Aberdeen, but Aberdeen have still had the, the main chances. We've won the ball back here. Thoreau flicks it on for Brophy. Can he score a goal? A consolation? He does. Uh, I just goes to show you that Brophy's still the one scoring the goals for us. But that was a nice flick on from Thoreau there. Boy, ball played forward. He flicks on playing as the, tar the target man. It's worked well. And Brophy takes the ball. And probably, again, the keeper should do <laughs> slightly better. Uh, but we'll take the goal nonetheless. And that's 3-1. Another highlight here. Could we could we have a, a crazy uh, added time, stoppage time, come back? We'll see. But Aberdeen have got the chance to begin with here. The ball swung in. And, oh, just hits off the top of the bar, look like there. And they were going to the end of the game. I was about to say we're rolling out to the end of the game here, but we're not. It's another highlight. The ball spread out to the right-hand side for Aberdeen. We win the ball back. Burrows charges up the left-hand side. And that is perhaps one of the worst passes I have ever seen in my life. But it's out for a throw in. Can we get another consolation goal? Throws it into Malumbu. Back to Burrows. Swing the ball into the box. It's cleared. McGowan. And there we go. Full time. 
3-1 to Aberdeen. But uh, possibly, possibly the beginnings of a new thought for a formation, maybe with more strikers on the pitch, uh, more players in the middle of the park rather than the 4-4-2, which had been working well at the start of the season, but been struggling. So I have a feeling maybe we might need to make a new tactic um, for some points further in the season because it seems to not be working anymore. So yeah, looking at league table now, that's us dropped out of European contention now, but we're still in the top six, top half of the table, which is higher than the, the board were expecting because they were looking for mid-table, which I think in their mind is kind of seventh through ninth. Uh, top half, uh, obviously, it would be the top, top six after the split. So so yeah, that's what we're in sixth place. We've just dropped behind Aberdeen now. But uh, I suppose all in all, it's not too disappointing. That's more than what the board were expecting. But after the start we had when we were up in third, I think we'd have been hoping to kind of continue that form on. But yeah, that's just dropped down to sixth place now. And looking at the schedule, you'll see that we've not been in the best run of form. Uh, we've we've uh, lost three games in a row now, only scoring one goal in those three games, uh, which is very disappointing. But uh, what we'll do now... I think as we'll come back, uh, we'll jump on a little bit. We're now here in mid-December. I think what we'll do is we'll come back at the uh, the start of January because uh, there are some players possibly coming in uh, on loan uh, in January and we might have to make a few signings. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but if we come back for the St Mirren and Hamilton games at the start of January, then we'll get to see... Um, Hopefully some games where we should, in theory, be winning. I'd say that. We literally have just played Hamilton before these sets of games here and we lost 1-0. But they are a team that we would like to be beating. So we'll come back at the start of January and uh, and we'll, we'll see you then. I hope you've enjoyed everything so far uh, in this series. If you have, please leave the video a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you later.